Hey everyone, in this video we are going to be styling the drop down menu in the nav bar. So if you come over here to the nav bar, and if you hover over post right here, you'll see the drop down menu. So by the end of the video, our drop down menu is going to look like this. Alright, so to do this, we're going to go to the drop down menu styling post, and let me just zoom in right here. So this is what we're going to be doing. So if you hover over post in the nav bar, the drop down menu will appear like we just saw. And you'll notice the drop down menu needs some styling to make it match the rest of the blog. So if we come over here to the local development server, and if we go up to the nav bar, then if we hover over post right here, you'll see the drop down menu and you'll see that it needs some styling to make it match the rest of the blog. All right, so to implement the styling, we'll be targeting the CSS classes, nav dropdown and dropdown item, which are provided by the default theme. And to locate these classes, we're going to take a look at the HTML of the blog by inspecting the browser, going to the elements tab, and then selecting an element on the page. And then after locating the classes, we'll be applying the styling to the index.style file, which will globally apply the styles. And then finally, we'll be describing the styling in detail. Now you want to make sure that you start the local development server, which should be running at localhost port 8080 to see the changes we'll be making to the site. And if the changes aren't appearing after you save them, then you're going to want to try restarting your local development server. So like I already showed you over here, I have the site up and running on localhost port 8080. And that's what you're going to want to do too. And then when adding the styling updates, you want to be sure to add each block of code below one at a time to your project, then view the changes in the browser to get a better understanding of what each block is responsible for. And then you can view all the code in this tutorial by going to the tutorial 14 branch of the code monkeys blog tutorials repository. So you can get all of the code for this video right here. All right. Now the first thing we're going to want to do before we start styling the drop down menu is we're going to force an element state of hover on the div tag with the class of drop down wrapper. So this will ensure we can see the changes we're making to the drop down menu even when we move the cursor away from the drop down wrapper class. So if we come over here to local development server and if I hover over post right here and then I move my pointer away, you'll see that the drop down menu goes away. So what we're going to do is we're going to force that state of hover to make sure that this drop down menu is hovering regardless of where the pointer is on the page. All right, so to do this, we need to select the dropdown wrapper class in the elements tab. And then here's the location of the dropdown wrapper class in the HTML. So inside of the body tag, inside of the div tag and ID of app, and then this div tag with an ID of global layout, and inside of the div tag with the class of theme container, then we'll have our header tag, the class of nav bar. And then inside of there we have our div tag with the class of links, and then we have our nav tag with the class of nav links, and then we have our nav item classes right here, attached to div tags, and then inside of the second nav item class, that's where our div tag is going to be with the class of dropdown wrapper. So that's the location of the dropdown wrapper class in the HTML of the blog. Now, after selecting the dropdown wrapper class in the elements tab, we're going to go to the styles tab, then we're going to click on this tab right here, and then we're going to force the element state of hover by checking the hover checkbox. All right, so if we come over here, if we inspect the page, we're in the elements tab, and then what we're going to do is we're going to go right up here to this post text, and then you can see that we have our div tag with the class of dropdown wrapper right here. All right, so we're going to come down here to the styles tab, click right here, and then we're going to click this hover right here and this will force an element state of hover so now you can see that it doesn't matter where the pointer is on the page this drop down menu is always going to have a state of hover so this will let us see the styling changes that we'll be making to the drop down menu without having to constantly go back and hover over it all right so now the drop down menu should be shown even when the cursor is moved away from the drop down wrapper class all right so now let's move on to the nav dropdown class. So now we're ready to begin styling the dropdown menu. So this is the HTML location of the nav dropdown class. So we're going to begin the styling by locating where the nav dropdown class is in the HTML. So inside of that dropdown wrapper class, with that div tag, you can see down here we have a UL tag with the class of nav dropdown, and this is the class that we're going to be styling for the drop down menu. 
All right, so that's the location of it. So from the HTML above, we can see that the nav dropdown class is attached to a UL tag and is a child of the div tag with the class of dropdown wrapper right here, which is a child of the div tag with the class of nav item. So you can see right here, we have our UL tag class of nav dropdown, which is a child of the div tag with the class of dropdown wrapper, which is a child of the div tag with the class of nav item. All right, so this means in the index.style file, we can nest the nav dropdown class inside of the nav item class and apply the following styles. So this is where we'll be adding the nav dropdown class to the index.style file. So we'll come down here to the styles and then over here, I, I have the index.style file open right over here. And then down here in this terminal, this is where I'm running the local development server. So what I'm gonna do is close out of the local development server right there and I'm going to come over here and copy this styling right here. And let me just make sure I have that copied properly. All right, so we're gonna come down here to the nav item class right down here. And let me just paste this in. Okay, just fix that up and then we'll save this. So you can see right here we have our nav dropdown class and this is inside of that nav item class and then we've applied all of this styling right here. So if we come down here, you can see that we have our text align center and this is going to horizontally align the text in the dropdown menu. And then we're applying this background color property right here. We're giving it a value of background color, and this sets the background color of the drop down menu to be the background color, which is a global styling variable we set in the palette.style file. And then we have this border of 0 0.125 rem solid, and then we give it this border color right here. And this adds a border around the drop down menu with a thickness of 0 0.125 rem, a style of solid, and a color of border color, which was defined in the palette.style file. And then we have our padding of 0 0.8 rem 0 and this adds a padding of 0 0.8 rem to the top and bottom and 0 to the left and right of the drop down menu. All right, so if we come over here to our local development server and you can see that we still have that drop down menu being hovered since we enforce that element state. And now you can see that we have the text inside of it is horizontally aligned. We have that background color and we've set that border and we've added that padding. So if we come down here and if we go to our nav dropdown class right here, you can see here's all the styling that we added. We added this text align. So you can see how it horizontally aligns the text. We have the background color. So you can see how it sets the background color. We have that border that we set. And then we have the padding that we set. So those are the styles that we've added for the nav dropdown class. All right, so if we come back over here, now we're going to move on to styling the drop down item class. All right, so we're going to start off by locating the drop down item class in the HTML. So if you go down here, you can see that inside of this nav drop down class on that UL tag, we have these li tags with classes of drop down item. And then inside of the first one, we just have an a tag, which is a link to posts. And that's when you see all posts, that's what that's going to be. So that's right up here. And then inside of this li tag with the drop down item class, you could see that we have this h4 tag, which says by topic. And then that has a ul tag inside of it with a class of drop down sub item wrapper. All right, so that's this li tag right there. And then this li tag right here. All right. Now from the HTML above, we can see that there are two dropdown item classes and each one is attached to an li tag and is a child of the ul tag, the class of nav dropdown. So you can see up here, we have our two li tags with classes of dropdown item and they are both child tags of the ul tag with the class of nav dropdown. All right, and also notice the h4 tag, which is a child of the li tag with a class of dropdown item and we'll be styling this h4 tag as well. All right, so this h4 tag right here, which is a child of this li tag with the class of dropdown item, we're also going to be styling that tag. All right, so let's move on to the styling. 
So in the index.style file, we can nest the dropdown item class inside of the nav dropdown class, as well as nest the h4 tag inside of the dropdown item class, and then we'll apply the following styles. All right, so this is the index.style file, and this is the styling we're going to want to add. So we're going to come over to the index.style file, and we're going to copy these styles right here. And we'll copy that. And then we're going to come down here to the nav dropdown. And this is where we will be adding this styling. And let me just come up here. Just move that in. All right. And then we will save this. And you can see that we have our dropdown item class right here. And that's nested inside of the nav dropdown class. And then we've applied the following styling. So we have our padding bottom of 0.4 rem. So this adds a padding of 0.4 rem to the bottom of each of the dropdown items. And then we have our H4 tag right here that we'll be targeting, which is inside of that dropdown item class. And what we're doing here is actually we don't need to set this font size. So I'll take that out. And I'll remove that from the blog. Um, now we have this border top, and this has a 0 0.0625 rem. So this adds a border to the top of the H4 tag. So that's the by topics text. And this adds it with a thickness of that 0 0.0625 rem, a style of solid, and then a color of border color, which was defined in the palette.style file. And then we have this cursor text. So this sets the cursor when pointing over the H4 tag. So again, that by topics text to be the text cursor, which indicates the text can be selected and is typically in the shape of an I beam. So you can, if you can see my cursor right here, you can see how it's has that shape of an I beam right there when you're hovering over text. And then we're going to set this margin right here. So this adds a margin of 0 0.45 rem to the top, 0 0.375 rem to the left and right, and 0 to the bottom of the H4 tag, which again is that by topics text. So if we come over here to the local development server, let me just make this bigger. And if we come down here inside of our nav dropdown, and then we have our dropdown item right here. And if we go down here to the styles, you can see that we've set this padding bottom of 0 0.45 rem. So if we remove that, you can see what the, the padding bottom is doing. It's adding a padding bottom to our LI tag right here, and then this LI tag right there. And if we come down here inside of our LI tag right here, our second LI tag with the class of dropdown item, you can see we have our H4 tag, which is where we applied the rest of these styles. And you can see down here that we have our border top right here. So if we take this off, you can see how it changes that border right there. And then the cursor right now is that the text cursor, which is in that shape of that I beam right there over that. Now, if we remove that, it's going to give us this different cursor instead, which should indicate that we could click on this, but we can't click on it and go to a different link. So that's why we're giving it that cursor text right there. And then you can see right down here is where we add that margin. So that's going to give us a little bit more spacing around the the border. This border top up here, it's going to give us a little bit more spacing around there and up at the top. So that's what that margin is doing for us. All right. So that is the styling. Now, if you have any questions about the CSS discussed above, then you can check out these resources right here. So we have one for a CSS tutorial. So for just the general CSS properties that we discussed in this video, and then we have one for the cursor property specifically. All right. So in this video, we styled the dropdown menu in the nav bar to make it match the rest of the blog. Now to do this, we started off by forcing the dropdown menu to hover. So if we come back over here, you can see how we force this dropdown menu to hover regardless of where the pointer is on the screen. And this let us be able to easily see the styles and the changes we were making to the dropdown menu as we we're making them as opposed to having to then go back and hover over the 
host right there. All right. And then we took a look at the nav dropdown class. So we found it in the HTML and then we applied our styling to it. And then we styled the dropdown item class. So we found it in the HTML and then we applied our styling to it. All right. So if we come over here, you can see now our dropdown menu is now styled and it matches the rest of the blog and it uses all that styling that we just applied in the in the nav dropdown class right up here and in our dropdown item class and then inside of this h4 tag right here all right so in the next tutorial we'll be installing and beginning the process of configuring the viewpress plugin blog all right so that's what we'll be doing in the next video